Hey everyone, this is Kieran from the Musculoskeletal Clinic. Today's exercise is looking at learning how to do sliders or gliders for your median nerve. It's a nerve in your arm here. So if you've been having things like uh, burning pain, sharp pain, pins and needles, that kind of stuff, um, you might find this exercise uh, therapeutic and useful. When we're considering some of the symptoms I listed before, uh, or you could group these things as things like paresthesia or dysesthesia when it starts to become um, more unpleasant, um, you're, you're considering, well, what's maybe happening? And so I think a nice analogy here is a nerve flossing. And if you imagine dental floss, and that dental floss needs to be able to rub up against the teeth, right? So it's normal for these nerves to slide and floss and rub up against muscles and other tissue. The tricky thing is that if you have sustained pressure or you have issues where you know, certain conditions can affect their protective covering around nerves, so things like diabetes, for example, um, or specific nerve injuries, um, you can get the nerve itself generating symptoms. And that can come up as that sort of list of symptoms we we're talking about, like like I said, burning pins and needles and a few other things. But what needs to be restored sometimes is the ability for that nerve to slide against that mechanical interface of these other tissues and be tolerant to it. And it's kind of, it's not like strength training as such, where you're doing progressive overload, where you're looking to, you know, necessarily um, produce more force. This is more like a sensitivity thing. So you're trying to decrease the sensitivity to the nerve moving against these tissues. Now, it's really common in a lot of the um, prescription you see around this for people to go into nerve tensioners, and that's actually stretching the nerve. Now, a nerve doesn't have much stretch to it, like very, very minimal. And it's rarely that you need to actually stretch the nerve as a limiting factor. It's more its ability to slide against tissue. And the cool thing is you don't have to take a nerve to the end of its stretch to encourage sliding. And we call that excursion. And this happens from sort of early on through movement through middle range towards the end of range, but we definitely don't have to go to end range to get this therapeutic effect. The trick is, is you're trying to eliminate some of the muscular system. So you might need some things to support you, for example. So in this case, I'm using this box to support my arm here and in that way my shoulder girdle doesn't feel like it has to tense up a little bit of course because i'm doing it there's going to be some muscular involvement all right now with the median nerve obviously it's coming out of this brachial plexus it has the sort of bigger nerve root uh, origins than some of the other peripheral nerves in the upper limb and it comes down underneath the bicep here and gives a lot of sort of motor and sensory input down and through the forearm and the hand here. The motor for the bicep is a different nerve. With nerve sliders, we've got a couple of things that can help us make sense of what to do. The nerve is gonna move the most around the joint that's moving. So if I'm moving my elbow like this, that median nerve is moving mostly around the elbow. Okay, and as I go this way, the nerve is getting longer. And as I go this way, the nerve is getting a bit shorter. So it's having to slide against the bicep and some of these other tissues in my forearm. The second thing is that the nerve is going to move towards the joint that is moving. And that becomes uh, more interesting when we use what's called a two-ended slider. So you're manipulating two joints to try and encourage an excursion between those two points. So in this example, if I move my wrist this way into extension. Now the nerve is on stretch here, right? But then if I move my elbow like this, the nerve is now moving mostly around the elbow and it's moving towards the elbow. So the nerve from here to here, as I do this, it's actually moving towards the elbow, which is interesting, right? So it, it's a way to manipulate how you want or where you want the therapeutic effect to be. 
So for someone that maybe has like a carpal tunnel syndrome and I want to maybe reduce the compression component to here, I'm probably going to keep things sort of middle or sort of towards this direction here a bit. Now, the reasons for why, why there might be compression are going to be a little bit different for everyone. Um, it's typically going to be a, a, a buildup and a hypertrophy of, of the tissues running through the carpal tunnel. And you might have to physically get surgery to remove some of that compression component so that the nerves can, you know, have a chance to breathe, essentially. But you can still get a therapeutic effect by encouraging the mechanical sensitivity to reduce. So you'd probably go mid-range here, and then I want to encourage movement here, okay? So as I go into a two-ended slider, I'm going to move two joints at the same time. So as I go this way, now I'm moving the wrist and the elbow. And so we do have a movement happening through both areas here. Or I can even move the neck, which is even further away. So I can do this point, right? Hold into here, and then I can do this movement. Now, because I'm shortening the nerve down here, and I'm doing a little bit of stretch here, I'm still getting this sliding component. If I wanted to do a full tensioner, which we're not gonna necessarily encourage, I'd need to put on full stretch into here and my shoulder gets down, okay? So it's a handful of information to make a little bit of sense of how you could maybe customize these yourself. In essence though, a two-ended slider is gonna be more excursion, a one-ended slider is gonna be a little bit less. And so a one-ended slider just means one joint's moving, a two-ended slider is two joints. And when you're sliding with two-ended slider, you want one end to shorten and one end to lengthen, okay? So in this case, if I went into my wrist, that's now shortening the nerve, and then I'm lengthening the nerve here, All right? Lengthening the nerve at the wrist, shortening at the neck. Lengthening at the neck, shortening at the wrist, okay? I could do it at the elbow, right? And lengthen at the elbow, shorten at the neck. Shorten at the elbow, lengthen at the neck, okay? So a few options there, but keep it simple, keep it, um, uh, non-provoking. You don't need to feel like you're doing anything for this to be helpful. You don't have to feel your symptoms and slowly increase the excursion over time. So increase the joint range or increase the, the distance of the slider. Or if you have the symptoms around the wrist, bring that into the slider. Or if it's too symptomatic, don't move the wrist, even though that's where your symptoms are, and just move the elbow and the neck. And you're still going to create sliding and gliding of this nerve. Okay, so give that a go, and if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.